Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks. Content warning. The following video contains material that may be harmful or traumatizing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Tatiana Spitzner was a Brazilian lawyer of 29 years of age married to Luis Felipe Manvaler, a 32-year-old university biology professor. At the time of the incident, the couple had been married for five years and had no children. They lived in an apartment in Guarapava, South Brazil. It was a young, good-looking couple with promising careers and a seemingly perfect life on social media. However, in closed doors, the couple had many problems and were in the blink of separation. Friends and family members of the victim declared that Tatiane was a victim of domestic violence, was afraid of her husband, and was planning to file for divorce. The text messages. Text messages sent between Tatiane and a friend of hers were used during the trial to prove the troublesome relationship of the couple. In these text messages, going back months prior to the murder, Tatiane confessed she was being mistreated by her husband, that she was afraid of him, and wanted the divorce. In some parts of the message thread, it reads. What a situation, and today I was open to talk. Only getting beaten. To which her friend replied. Send that guy away. Tatiane continued. I can't, I am afraid. Later Tatiane wrote. I had an ugly argument with Luis Felipe today. I'm just lacking the courage to face the divorce. It has been a month and a half since we had sex for the last time. He doesn't touch me anymore. He is on the juice again and changed completely. I don't recognize this person next to me anymore. He is rude and stupid. He said he hates me to death. He told me he doesn't know when this hate will go away, and that he can't even talk to me anymore. The crime. On the night of the murder, the couple had a night out with friends and family members to celebrate Luis Felipe's birthday. However, Tatiane found a picture of a woman on his mobile phone and started an argument. The couple then decided to leave the party sooner and went home. On their way back home, Luis Felipe said they kept arguing until they reached the apartment street. Then the argument escalated quickly from words to physical violence. The CCTV footage these security footage are the last moments of Tatiane's life. At 2.34 a.m. on the 22nd of July 2018, the couple arrived at the building of their apartment. The car stops in front of the building and the physical aggression starts while the couple is still inside the vehicle. At 2.36 a.m., Luis Felipe drives the car inside the underground park of the building. He stops the car, pulls Tatiane out of the vehicle, and proceeds to assault her again. While he parks the car, Tatiane walks away, and goes sitting against the wall at the other end of the room. Three minutes later, Luis Felipe comes up to her, and by the images, it seems as he kicked her to make her stand up from the floor. Then he pulls her up and goes away to call the lift. While he goes away, she hides from him behind a wall. When he understands she was not walking behind him, 
he comes back looking for her. When he finds her, she tries to escape and runs in the direction of the lift. But he chases after her and reaches the lift before she has time to close the doors. Two forty a.m. Tatiana enters the lift and presses the button of the first floor. Luis Felipe comes right after, grabs her, and presses the button of the fourth floor. When the lift stops on the first floor, Tatiana tries to get out, but Luis Felipe grabs her and throws her back inside. During the struggle, Tatiana hits with her head on the door of the lift. 2.42 a.m. The lift reaches the fourth floor. Tatiana refuses to get out. Luis Felipe pushes her. She tries resisting, but she is no match to his strength. Luis Felipe forces her out of the lift and throws her onto the floor. Neighbors within the building testified they heard a woman screaming for help, but no one came to her rescue. There are no footages of the next 15 minutes, however, the evidences indicate Tatiane was beaten and strangled by Luis Felipe with his bare hands. Then Luis Felipe brought her body to the balcony and threw her to the street from a fourth-store high apartment to simulate death by suicide. At 2.57 a.m., the body of Tatiane Spitzner hits the pavement of the street. It was a fall of approximately 22 meters or 72 feet high. This recreation of the fall done with a dummy makes it easy to understand the true high from which her body fell. A minute later, Luis Felipe descends to the street and comes closer to the body. A neighbor across the street heard the commotion and testified he heard Luis Felipe shouting, My love! Wake up! The neighbor then crosses the street and comes near to see what happened. He sees the corpse on the pavement and Luis Felipe next to it. He runs back to his house to pick up the phone to call for help. While the neighbor went away, Luis Felipe grabs Tatiane and brings her to the entrance of the building. The neighbor returns with the mobile phone, and while he's calling the emergency number, he sees Luis Felipe carrying the corpse inside the building. The blood of the victim is visible on his shirt. The neighbor then tells Luis Felipe, What are you doing? Leave her on the floor, I'm calling an ambulance. To which Luis Felipe responded, It's useless. She is already dead. Look at her, she's really pale. Then while the neighbor is calling the emergency number, Luis Felipe drags the corpse inside the building and closes the door. At around 3 a.m., the footage shows Luis Felipe carrying the corpse inside the lift. He lays down the corpse on the lift's floor, presses the button to the fourth floor, and places his hands on his head. Although not a precise science, his body language screams, Oh my God! What have I done? While the police arrived at the location, Luis Felipe drags his wife's corpse to the interior of the apartment. It was reported that he tried to change her clothes, probably in an attempt to remove DNA evidences, but he understood he had no time, so he exited the apartment and locked the door with the corpse inside. It is believed he acted this way to delay as much as possible the finding of the cadaver, and give himself more time to escape the crime scene. Five minutes later, at 3.05 a.m., Luis Felipe returns to the lift with a clean shirt and wipes out the bloodstains from the floor and the walls of the lift. At 3.06 a.m., Luis Felipe enters once more in the lift and descends to the underground park. While the lift is coming down, 
He keeps wiping out the bloodstains to make sure he didn't leave any of it behind. In the underground park, Luis Felipe grabs Tatiana's car and escapes the crime scene at 3.08 a.m. The security footage also shows Luis Felipe fleeing the scene. At the moment the police were inspecting the crime scene, it's possible to see him driving away in the background. Apprehension. The police captured Luis Felipe after he fell asleep at the wheel of the vehicle and ended up crashing the car on a motorway. This accident happened 340 kilometers or 211 miles away from the crime scene, and 50 kilometers or 31 miles away from the border of the country. Police believe he was trying to flee to the neighboring country of Paraguay. He was apprehended and arrested on suspicion of murder. When Luis Felipe was incarcerated, he was questioned regarding the car accident. Without being asked at all about the death of Tatiana Spitzner, he started talking about it and reiterated the fact that he was innocent. Body language alone is not enough proof to determine if someone is guilty or not. And I am glad that it is in this way because anyone put under the pressure of being accused of having done something serious can easily become nervous and start acting suspiciously. However, what Luis Felipe is doing in this interview is called over explanation. It's a behavior that is often associated with someone who is guilty. Isso eu bati o carro, porque devido à, à situação, né? A imagem da minha esposa pulando a sacada, não saiu da minha cabeça. Né? É, nós não vamos tratar do fato, tá? Tudo bem, só, é, então, é eu... só com relação ao sinistro que o senhor se envolveu aqui. Bati, são... eu vou esses filhaços no meu antebraço. Tá. No braço. Uhum. Não. Mas o senhor está bem? Ele precisou de atendimento médico? Está tranquilo? Não, atendimento, atendimento médico não. Não precisou? Não, não precisei nada. Tá bem. Agora, apesar de tudo que você passou, o senhor está tranquilo. Eu digo assim, fisicamente, estável? Sim, fisicamente, sim. É, mas ainda fica martelando, né? Mesma imagem, porque eu sou inocente, eu amo muito. Investigation. On the night of the murder, the police officers had to break the entrance door to get inside the flat. They found the bloody and broken corpse of Tatiana Spitzner on the floor. Luis admitted to having battered his wife, but he stated he didn't kill her. He affirmed she committed suicide when she jumped from the balcony. Then later, probably recommended by his lawyer, he rectified his statement and said she fell accidentally when she was threatening to commit suicide. Even today, Luis Felipe insists on this version of the incident. He admitted to having brought the corpse of the victim in the elevator up to the apartment, and he said the reason he fled the crime scene was because the images of his wife jumping from the balcony were too disturbing for him. Prior to the release of the footage by the police, Luis Felipe said he couldn't remember what had happened during the incident, which was terribly convenient for him. However, after the release of the security video footage, and after everyone had seen what he did, then he tried to explain his behavior by saying he was in shock and not acting rationally. When the police released the footage of the assault, it went viral in Brazil, and raised massive public indignation regarding domestic violence against women. Obviously, the footage was a severe blow to his defense, and coerced him to apologize to everyone in an attempt to clean his public image. Needless to say, the violent content of the footages are not easily forgotten. So his efforts were rather futile. Primeiro, pedi perdão. Uh a família da Tatiane por todas as agressões que eu cometi eu não matei a Tatiane gostaria de pedir perdão pelo, pelo mesmo motivo para minha família eles sabem que eu não sou assim a todas as mulheres do Brasil todas as mulheres 
pedir perdão por isso. The trial. During the trial, Luis Felipe insisted on his innocence and that Tatiana had committed accidental suicide. But the forensic report revealed that Tatiana was already dead when her body touched the pavement. The cause of death of Tatiana Spitzner was determined to be strangulation. The victim had a pair of hands marks imprinted around her throat, and the hyoid bone, located at the front of the neck, was fractured. This is a common injury associated with strangulation. The specialist also said her body had multiple bone fractures consistent with the fall from a fourth floor balcony, but these injuries happened post-mortem. Characteristics such as inflammation, subcutaneous bleeding, spattering, coagulation, or enzyme activity can be used to determine if a wound was done before or after death. Toxicology reports also revealed that the victim had a high concentration of alcohol in her bloodstream, which means her intoxication made it harder for her to defend herself against her husband. Our investigation proves that the victim was killed inside the apartment by asphyxiation, and her body was thrown over the balcony of the apartment, said criminal prosecutor Dunia Rampazzo. Simulations using a dummy were carried out by the technicians to test the fall of the victim from the apartment where the couple lived. The text's messages between the victim and her close friends were presented in court to demonstrate the troublesome relationship of the couple. But the defense lawyer disputed this claim, and asserted the couple had a happy relationship. During this trial, the defense lawyer did one of the most bizarre things I have ever seen in a courtroom. To demonstrate that the defendant could not have strangled the victim with just one hand, the lawyer used an assistant to make a demonstration. Porque não tinha material biológico do Luiz Felipe, por evidente. Olha aqui o pescoço dela que ficou. Olha aqui, ó. Olha aqui, ó. Claro que pegando aqui, ó, vai esticar, vai ter hemorragia. Tá aqui, ó. Olha aqui o pescoço dela já que ficou. Mas eu esganei, esganou. Isso aqui, eu tô matando uma mulher. Você acha que esses colares do tio teriam arrebentado? No entanto... The footage speaks volumes. I don't understand how come this bizarre demonstration was not immediately stopped, or the lawyer reprimanded by the judge. Handling with a roughness a woman to prove that you cannot kill her is utterly moronic. The lawyer's behavior was questioned by many, if not everyone. So later, the lawyer felt compelled to make a video to explain his actions. He said that it was nothing but a demonstration, and that no harm had been done to the assistant. However, and regardless of his explanations, a motion against him was sent to the Supreme Court of Ethics to investigate the case. The Sentence Luis Felipe Manvaler was sentenced to a 31 years in prison for the murder of his wife. The interview. Two years after his sentence, a Brazilian reporter interviewed Luis Felipe in the prison. Because of his living conditions, the stopping of exercising and using steroid cycles, and also because probably now he's using illegal substances to cope with life behind bars, Luis Felipe doesn't look like the same man anymore. The first thing that catches the eye is his physical appearance. The change that is more striking when compared with pictures before and after is his muscle mass and physical presence. If before he was the image of masculinity and physical strength, now he is the image of a broken man, visibly thinner, with his eyes caved in. In the case of Luis Felipe, even the morphology of his face changed radically. His jawline looks much smaller and weaker than before. Profiling. Despite his efforts to be seen as an innocent man, Luis Felipe sounded very little convincing. I was not inside that apartment to see what happened, but Luis Felipe's behavior screams guilty. 1. He kept insisting he was innocent even when he was not asked about it. An innocent man doesn't need to explain why he is innocent. 2. He did not call an ambulance or tried to resuscitate his wife. He assumed straight away she was already dead, therefore there was nothing else to be done. 3. He moved the body from the crime scene and hid it from the police. 4. He changed his clothes and the clothes of the victim, probably planning to destroy DNA evidences. 5. He cleaned the blood from the crime scene. 6. He blocked the apartment's door to delay the police from finding the corpse to give him time to escape. 7. He fled the crime scene and tried to escape to a neighboring country. 8. His body language. Although not a perfect science. Does this look like a man who is innocent? Or a man who is guilty and terrified of the punishment he is about to receive? Aftermath. 
The security footage of Luis assaulting his wife went viral and raised a large public condemnation against domestic violence in Brazil. Brazil has a dark history regarding violence against women. On average, 530 women report suffering from domestic violence every day, and in 2017, the year prior to the death of Tatiana Spitzner, 1,133 women victims of domestic violence died in Brazil at the hands of their spouses. If you are a victim of domestic abuse, please seek support in your local area. Even if there aren't any local organizations nearby, there are always international non-profitable organizations that might help. Enduring domestic violence in a relationship is never the solution, and the tendency is the violence to keep escalating to the worst. So make yourself a favor and seek help now. Tomorrow might be too late. Final Thoughts Although the images I showed in this video are blurred, they are still disturbing to watch. I am conscious that due to its violent content more likely YouTube will restrict the viewers of this video to only adults, reducing therefore significantly the number of viewers I could get from this video. However, I decided to include the footage because close our eyes, or look away just because something is uncomfortable, accomplices exactly nothing. To fully understand a systematic problem, it's important to look directly at its brutality without filters or sugarcoating it. Being in this case domestic violence against women and what can happen if no one intervenes to help. It's only when we feel uncomfortable with something that we will feel compelled to take action and do something to stop it from happening again. There's a saying in Brazil that says don't stick your spoon on it. It means basically is none of your business to get involved with other couples affairs. This is obvious cultural, and probably not exclusive to the country of Brazil. I too was raised with a similar mentality. Tatiana Spitzner died because no one gave it much importance to what was happening, or just didn't want to get involved. Hopefully, after watching this video, someone will help next time, and prevent a murder from happening.